and I am here with Sam Bankman Fried. He is the CEO and founder of the crypto exchange FTX, but he's really got his hands in sort of numerous things, having had an incredible few years. In so you hear how Weisenthal is pumping this guy who's running a criminal operation. Do you hear them talk about, hey, you know, you're running an operation that, that helps terrorists, helps fund terrorist activities, that helps fund human sex trafficking, that helps illegal drug trafficking, right? You're never going to hear anybody in the media talk about that. Think about that, right? Because their buddies control the industry. He's a great guy, according to Weisenthal. He's a superhero, right? Yeah. Let's, say, you know, right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's pivot a little bit on another stable coins related greed financial system. That what a what a oh god. This guy. <sighs> so one of the ways is to is to make a Ponzi scheme. Mr. Bankman, FTX, running a Ponzi scheme, okay? He's explained it as a Ponzi scheme. He's described it as a Ponzi scheme. Now, that's one of the ways to return 14%. Another way is to uh, rent out your crypto. And I would say what's going on there Obviously, people aren't going to pay 14%, 15% to rent out someone else's crypto. So what are they doing? They're renting out someone's crypto two, three, four, five, and six times. They're leveraging it. That's why they don't have the crypto to return to these people. That's what's going on. I mean, I don't need to look into it. I, already, it's, I know. I know how these parasitic criminals operate. You see, that's what's going on. The criminals love cryptocurrency because it's not regulated. They can fuck anybody any way they want, anytime they want, and nobody can come after them. I, I wouldn't necessarily bet too much on the, the failure of crypto because I will tell you this. The criminal mafia has too much to lose. They have too much at stake. You understand? You've got a you've got a mafia of professional criminals that run that industry now, and they are buddies with the regulators who are going to come in eventually <clears throat> and regulate it. So I can't see it going away because there's too much money for them to to steal. You see, Wall Street completely runs the cryptocurrency industry, I'd say, you know, 90, 95%. And when I say Wall Street, I'm talking about venture capital, same thing. <clears throat> talking about, uh, you know, any type of professional investor. So, you know, I mean, I, look, I talked about this many, many years ago. Crypto's a scam. No doubt about it. And anyone who is giving you information on investments, who who also talks about crypto, is a complete fraud. They're irresponsible fraud. You cannot talk about investing in the stock market and crypto. Now, you can say, okay, it's a gamble. I'm going to gamble with it. Okay, fine. But do you think it's responsible to have a channel on YouTube to be talking about the stock market and then pumping crypto, even if you say it's a gamble, it's risky, right? I don't think that's responsible at all. It's not responsible because cryptocurrency is a complete and utter scam. It's backed by nothing. And honestly, everybody in cryptocurrency, they really deserve to lose everything. Because they didn't want regulation. They didn't want investor protections. That's why they went to crypto. They didn't want, and you have F FTX now, 
is now selling they have a trading platform where you can buy and sell stocks and leverage 20 to 1 well guess what think about this for a second guaranteed almost nobody knows this that's on FTX guaranteed because I know the stupidity of the people that are in this dog shit you're talking about the typical YouTube idiot if FTX goes bankrupt and you have you own a lot of stocks on the FTX platform guess what you're screwed they get your stocks goodbye it's gone because they have no SIPC protection okay that's similar to the FDIC for banks it's for, it's for brokerage firms they don't have that protection there's zero protection think about this for a second this 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 clown this fraudster mr. bankman he didn't own any cryptocurrencies until a few years ago he started this exchange in 2019 and he's worth he was worth 32 billion dollars a few months ago now it's 11 or 12 billion dollars how is this possible how is it possible he's being funded by a bunch of Wall Street predators you understand I hate to go to uh, Wikipedia because it's, it's a bullshit source but certain things are factual right but Wikipedia is just complete garbage source. Let's take a look. I want to see if they have. Uh... Yeah, so he's hiding out in Bahamas running this uh, criminal operation. Oh, look. In August 2021, Kevin O'Leary signed on as an official spokesperson for FTX to be paid in cryptocurrency. What a sleazy scumbag piece of garbage. By the way, if, let me show you something here. I saw a video. Kevin O'Leary says something like from from this from scam tank stupid scam show Kevin O'Leary says I'm like oh I'll, I'll I'll offer money because I'm not I don't like I hate greedy people that's what he says tell me Kevin O'Leary is not one of the most greedy people possible shameless piece of garbage I mean these people should be shamed man I mean, where's the money coming from, folks? Where's the money coming from? You're raising a billion dollars from 60 investors, including SoftBank. And this guy, the SoftBank, this guy is a, is a complete fucking loser. And I mean, <laughs> he's an idiot. All he does, basically, is... He, he, he basically pumps stocks up. He gets he he takes large positions in, in, in stocks and just kind of he, he's a he's a complete I'm not gonna I'm not gonna even get into his shitty strategy. This guy's an idiot. Sequoia Capital, venture capital firm. So so you see what I'm saying, folks? I mean, this is just shocking to me. Crypto scams. You know, and of course, I mean this is just a reality. It's backed by nothing. It's backed by nothing. Zero. Zero. And it's even worse than that. It's even worse than the tulip bubble. You know why? It's worse than the tulip bubble craze. I'll tell you why. Because, once again, they can seize your assets. The crypto exchange can freeze your assets, can take your assets legally. Okay? They can take your assets. If there's a bankruptcy, your assets are gone. Zilch. Think about that. And it's not as if you're going to have any warning. Take a look at what happened to Celsius and Voyager. People tried to pull out. They tried to get their money out. And they just stopped. They couldn't. They couldn't. Why do you think they shut them down? They, 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 they froze the accounts. Because they, they were leveraged. I'll guarantee you. It was, a, it was a bank run. You understand. 
they were they were over leveraged which is similar to some degree somewhat similar to the stable coin situation those stable coins were promoted as to be paid to the dollar but they weren't backed by dollars so they didn't have dollars to back it up none of these exchanges have sufficient money to back up all the assets they've divvied out they're all over leveraged and i'll tell you right now that's why the cryptos if they don't if they keep collapsing you're going to see some really devastating losses okay because we're talking about a big domino effect and guess what criminals like this guy people running the exchanges the investors they're not going to lose money you guys are going to lose money they're going to take your money you see they get your assets they don't lose it's just like wall street the bankers they don't lose it's just like the youtube fake investment gurus they don't lose even though they they may lose money in stocks they make it back and their bogus endorsements their bogus affiliate links their scammy affiliate links and all the idiots sending them money selling their courses they don't lose you understand folks <laughs> i mean <laughs> wake up youtube is the world's largest portal for scams and scam artists show me youtubers that are pitching stocks that aren't scammers and it's not just pitching stocks every single genre they're scammers you name it it's all a bunch of grifting scumbags filthy scumbags youtube is a disaster you know how many times i've contacted the ftc about youtube over the years contact the ft they need a special department think about the, the the damage that youtube has caused think about it for a second you've got all these quote content creators you know scammers who are pitching all these crypto scams they've been doing it and they're getting paid money to pitch this garbage and they're blowing up just like robin hood getting paid money to pitch robin hood and robin hood screwing people it's a criminal operation youtube is facilitating and profiting from a massive criminal operation and so are these youtubers think about this it's fucking ridiculous man nobody's saying anything about this it's ridiculous this is why I came out, folks. This is why I came out. I never was on YouTube. Never wanted to be on YouTube. Why? I'll say it. I said it before. I'll say it again. Because I saw a long time ago, 99% of people who watch YouTube are idiots. You're talking about the lowest level of human existence. Completely naive morons. These are the same people who are greedy, lazy, stupid. And this is why you have people like Ty Lopez and Grant Cardone and all these scammers on YouTube. Why do you think that they're focusing on YouTube? <laughs> because the audience is there. The target market is there. I'm like the opposite. High level, credible, world class expert. I have no I desire to be on YouTube, to market on YouTube. That's why I never came on YouTube. You see, I had to come out and call out this shit because it's gotten too bad. And of course, when I do that, I'm threatening to dismantle the fake investment guru genre. And so I'm being defamed, slandered, lies, cyber stalking cyber harassment that's right folks
There are two fundamental reforms that we need is to get adequate capital and two, to get far higher levels of enforcement of fraud statutes. Existing ones, I'm not even talking about new ones. Things were being done which were uh, certainly illegal and clearly criminal in certain cases, which, I mean, fraud, fraud is a fact. Fraud, fraud creates very considerable instability in competitive markets. If you cannot trust your counterparties, uh, it won't work. And indeed, we saw, saw that it didn't. So things went very well, and then the economy collapses, and so all of a sudden people are saying, well, it was Alan Greenspan's fault because he should have anticipated this. Did you think that was fair? Nobody forecast the 2008 crisis. One of the things I put in the second book I wrote was how the IMF missed it, the Federal Reserve missed it. You go down a whole series of uh, right. the major forecasting well, everybody got it wrong, let's say. You can't have a crisis of that nature. That, okay. that is not a surprise. Nobody forecast the 2008 crisis. One of the things I put in the second book I wrote was how the IMF missed it, the Federal Reserve missed it. You go down a whole series of uh, okay. the major forecasting. Well, everybody got it wrong, let's say. You can't have a crisis of that nature. That, that, that is not a surprise. Nobody forecast the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecast the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecast the 2008 crisis. There are two fundamental reforms that we need is to get adequate capital and two, to get far higher levels of enforcement of fraud statutes. Existing ones, I'm not even talking about new ones. Things were being done which were uh, certainly illegal and clearly criminal in certain cases, which, I mean, fraud, fraud is a fact. Fraud, fraud creates very considerable instability in competitive markets. If you cannot trust your counterparties, uh, it won't work. And indeed, we saw, saw that it didn't. Uh, certainly illegal and clearly criminal in certain cases, which, I mean, fraud, fraud is a fact. Fraud, fraud creates very considerable instability in competitive markets. If you cannot trust your counterparties, uh, it won't work. And indeed, we saw, saw that it didn't. Certainly illegal and clearly criminal in certain cases, which, I mean, fraud, fraud is a fact. Fraud, fraud creates very considerable instability in competitive markets. If you cannot trust your counterparties, uh, it won't work. And indeed, we saw, saw that it didn't. There are two fundamental reforms that we need is to get adequate capital and two, to get far higher levels of enforcement of fraud statutes. Existing ones, I'm not even talking about new ones. Things were being done which were uh, certainly illegal and clearly criminal in certain cases, which, I mean, fraud, fraud is a fact. Fraud, fraud creates very considerable instability in competitive markets. If you cannot trust your counterparties, uh, it won't work. And indeed, we saw, saw that it didn't.
Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Things were being done which were uh, certainly illegal and clearly criminal in certain cases, which Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. 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 Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis.
Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis. Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis.
Nobody forecasts the 2008 crisis.
terms of getting back as an investor, if it's coming down to here, almost, almost irrespective of what's going on, I have to believe if I have to make a call in advance, and of course I can change depending on what happens, but I have to believe this is where you want to start doing that 18, 17, around there. Their earnings report is a complete game changer, at least for a, quite a while. Bottom line, NVIDIA now is going to enter the realm of Tesla, uh, Apple, and all these other big, you know. I mean, listen, NVIDIA can, can come down to 150, come down to 100 bucks. If you don't think it's possible, then you don't understand how the market works. I mean, listen, NVIDIA can, can come down to 150, come down to 100 bucks. If you don't think it's possible, then you don't understand how the market works.